My name is Jerry Gray. I am a British-born citizen and I lived in Australia for a short while, but in 2004, I came to live in China, in Zhongshan, Guangdong. Westerners, they don't understand China, so I think better for them to come over and look around and have their own experience in China. Meet Jerry Gray and Anne Liang, a couple who made their home in South Guangdong province in Zhongshan, a city of three million on the west of the Pearl Delta, opposite Hong Kong's special administrative region. Over the past two decades, the couple also took on a mission to travel across China by bicycle. For over 35,000 kilometers, they cycled across the country, from north to south, from east to west, and from west to east says Jerry. Along their journey together, Jerry and Anne have borne witness to history while watching firsthand the phenomenal changes in China. In the first part of today's edition of Footprints, we'll hear what China is like from Jerry's unique perspective, as well as how he and Anne had cycled their way throughout the country to make a difference to the local folks in Zhongshan. Stay tuned. Although based in a small town in the northeast of England, Jerry's father was a master mariner, the highest grade of qualification for merchant seafarers, granting him a license to command ships of any size. This meant he was at sea a lot, says Jerry, with his mother bringing up five sons pretty much on her own. This undoubtedly instilled a sense of self-sufficiency in the young man's mind, and when the family relocated to the opposite end of England when Jerry was in his teens, the concept of uprooting became a learned experience. Fast forward three decades, and Jerry had already made one of the longest relocations possible on our planet, from England to Australia. For him, it started with a job transfer, but ended with being made redundant in 2004. Jerry, who turned 45 that year, took advantage of the opportunity to seek a change in his life through travel, beginning with a visit in China. My idea was to travel the world with this portable skill of teaching English and my first job was in China. That was in 2004 and I never left. <laughs> I decided that I was going to stay in Zhongshan and I decided to go looking for a job and um, I went to a language centre and met the manager there and that's Anne. <laughs> yes. She was my boss. <laughs> Still is. <laughs> I found that uh, foreigner or Western man is more direct to express their, their feelings, their love. Says Anne, who's a Zhongshan local, but has also travelled the world, enough to become open-minded on cross-cultural differences. With her deep knowledge of how implicit the Chinese tend to be in uttering their intimate feelings, she finds the directness of a Western man rather fascinating rather than awkward or alienating. And gradually, their connection grew from a simple contract of employment to each other's life partners. We are obviously from different cultures, but because both of us have traveled widely, both of us have experience of the other culture, I don't think it's such a, a broad difference. There, there, there was no, there, there was a bridge already there before we ever met each other. We, we were comfortable with each other's cultures before. We asked how far he had cycled around China. Jerry says around 35,000 kilometers. My wife and I got involved in charity work in 2005. Myself and another foreign friend, an Irish guy, decided to ride to Xinjiang. When I decided to do this bike ride, I thought it might be an idea to link the two together. The place Jerry and his expat friend rode to is the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, located in the northwest of China, right at the crossroads of Central Asia and East Asia. Setting off from Zhongshan in the southeastern side of the country, therefore, the two of them cycled alone to Ningxia, Gansu and Xinjiang in 2014, covering a 4,500-kilometer trip that took them to more than 20 cities in 57 days. 
and it created a bit of publicity, it generated a lot of interest. So we basically traveled north from Guangdong into Hunan, into Hubei, into Shanxi, Gansu, Ningxia, and then across to Xinjiang. But to Jerry, completing the ride from Zhongshan to Urumqi, the capital city of Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, was just the beginning of a new journey for him. I had a feeling that I hadn't completed a journey and I wanted to ride from Urumuchi back to Zhongshan and and kind of encouraged me to do it. So I just, we kind of got to the point where if I'm going to do it, let's do it together. We flew to Urumuchi, had the bikes shipped to Urumuchi and then rode home. So that's a reversal of my first ride. So again, we touched the same provinces and regions. So in 2019, five years after his first cycling odyssey to Urumqi, Jerry took the opportunity to try out the journey back, and this time together with Anne. During the couple's 57 days of riding back to Zhongshan, Jerry documented the trip, the changes at local towns and villages that he and his friend had visited five years ago, and posted them onto his social media platforms. Speaking of which, Jerry laughs and says that he only had two followers on his Twitter site from 2015 to 2020. But out of the will to document his trips cycling across China, he still decided to continue on updating the trip with videos and photographs. And as time went by, more and more people started to follow them and hear how the cycling couple saw China with their journey and their lenses from a first-person narrative. Up till this day, Jerry's ex-account, formerly Twitter, has accumulated 84,555 followers. It kind of snowballed, it rolled and got bigger and bigger and uh, we had Zhongshan Television uh, covering us every day. They would call me in the afternoon and say, where are you now? How far have you come? When we got back, we had a, a function, an event, and that raised a lot of money. Your walk is even yeah. more, yeah. Me and another uh, American girl, we uh, walked from Zhongshan to Beijing four and a half months and uh, about 2,500 Ks, mm -hmm. kilometers. We mostly just stay in cheap hotels, camp a few times in mountain, but safe, quite safe. I didn't feel any, we didn't meet any like um, dangerous situations, no, not at all. Given the vastness of the country, traveling across China on bike or foot in such a long distance manner as Jerry and Anne had done is rather unusual. Moreover, they've always linked their trips to charity so that the pleasure of sharing the trip with one another could, in turn, raise funds for their charity work. Anne's trip on foot from Zhongshan to Beijing was in 2015, and that time she managed to raise 300,000 RMB, or roughly 44,887 US dollars back then. And the one she and Jerry took in 2019 when they cycled from Urumqi back to Zhongshan, also helped to raise 200,000 RMB. That's around 30,000 US dollars at that time. All of which was later used to enrich the lives of disabled people around Zhongshan. My wife and I got involved in charity work in 2005. Our charity basically now is helping the disabled people in Zhongshan. And the government does help disabled people, but we can add to that. Disabled people didn't get much attention from mm. society, so we decided to yeah, maybe focus on disabled people. We raise funds so we can donate, and we focus very much on the disabled community here in Zhongshan. Uh, we used to try and help people who were poor, and we found that the government are doing that pretty well now anyway, so we tend to focus more on disabilities and helping disabilities to become more assimilated in community. Yeah. And you wouldn't see disabled people, now you do. And that's the beauty of how China is changing. And I, I'd like to think we had something to do with that by, by raising attention mm. more than raising the money. So far, if we count it from 2005 to now, it's more than three million. We collect the money but we donated it to, you know, to organization use to uses it. Use it yeah. In 2021, the video Jerry made out of their cycling journey also won a second prize within the Lingnan Culture and Greater Bay Area unit of the My China Story International Short Video Competition. 
Initiated by the country's largest foreign language publishing group in 2018, the competition encourages multilingual Chinese-themed short videos from domestic and international content creators to share their best experiences when visiting the country. And for Jerry, now a new Zhongshan local, the story sharing just comes naturally. He says that many individuals come to China with preconceived notions about what China is like, based on what has been reported about the country. However, after a while, individuals come to understand that this is not the case here. I've ridden across China from north to south, from east to west, and from west to east. So I've done probably 30, maybe 35,000 kilometers on a bike in China. So I get to know the place pretty well. I've seen lots of changes in China. When I first came here, it was almost impossible, for example, to get a coffee. And I, I'm a coffee addict. <laughs> pretty much everything that I, I used to miss, I can now find here. If you want to find out what's happening in China, ask people who are in China with poverty alleviation, um, rural revitalization, incredible infrastructure in the last five years. We've got bridges to Hong Kong. We've got high-speed trains. All of this is in the last five to 10 years. So anyone who was here in the 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, the China they knew is not the China of today. And that's the most important thing that I can put across. With that, we conclude this episode of Footprints. Thanks for listening. I'm Bob Jones. If you're interested in hearing more about the lives of ordinary but incredible people in China, follow us wherever you get your podcasts. Just key in Footprints and you can find more stories anytime anywhere. We'll see you next time.